This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Silk PLA is stunning. It's the kind of material that instantly makes your prints look epic, but it's also touchy. One wrong slicer setting and you go from a mirror finish to a dull or bubbly disaster. In this video, I'll show you how to get consistent, glossy results with Silk PLA, including my go-to slicer settings, real test results, and the exact problems to watch out for. So what is Silk PLA? At its core, Silk PLA is still polylactic acid, but what gives it that reflective surface isn't actually silk. It's usually a mixture of polyester or elastomer type materials, blended in at around 10-20% to 20 depending on the brand. These additives change the way that the filament flows. They also make the filament slightly elastic. They make it smoother and more self-leveling, which creates that high gloss finish as layers blend together. Each brand uses a slightly different formula. Some focus on shine, others focus on ease of printing. That's why you'll find some brands like Sunlu or Bamboo giving different results, even with the exact same settings. Also, Silk PLA is more brittle than regular PLA, so don't use it for mechanical parts. It's just for looks, not for strength. So now let's go through some optimal settings for your print. Note that I'll be using Orca Slicer for this, but most slicers have similar settings that you can use. Now there are two main settings that affect silk, temperature and speed. So let's start with temperature. Here's a temp tower I printed with Sunlu Silk at 30 millimeters a second from 190 degrees Celsius to 230. You'll see that the gloss fades into a matte finish as it prints at a lower temperature. Lower temperatures equals a dull matte look and surprisingly more stringing. Higher temps equals better flow and gloss and less stringing. I got similar results when printing with bamboo silk as well. Now, normally you'd lower the temperature to reduce stringing, right? But with Silk PLA, it's the opposite. This is because the additives in Silk PLA need more heat to flow properly. If the temperature's too low, they don't blend as well, the filament drags during travel moves, and the outside gloss is reduced. And here's the catch. Every brand behaves differently. Here are two temperature towers I printed with the same settings, one with bamboo silk and the other with sunlo. You can see that the bamboo filament turned matte a little earlier and strung a little bit more toward the lower end. But with sunlo filament, it held its gloss for longer and strung slightly less. Both were dried beforehand and kept in filament dries during printing, so moisture wasn't a factor. I also had my retraction settings dialed in perfectly. The difference just comes down to a unique blend of ingredients used in each brand. That's why printing off a temp tower before you start a new brand of filament is super important. Just make sure you run it at the actual speed you plan to print with. Speaking of speed, Silk PLA hates it. Here's a temp tower I ran at 30 millimeters a second, and you can see that the filament has had time to cool evenly and self-level, resulting in that glassy surface. Here's one I printed at 100 millimeters a second, and you can see that in order to get that same amount of gloss, you need to add more heat. But the problem with this is then your overhangs and bridges start to fail. So if you want to print faster, make sure you enable slow down for overhangs or some type of setting that's similar. So your slicer automatically reduces speed in tricky areas. Now this speed change is normally fine if it's just isolated to overhangs or bridges, but if your slicer changes speed throughout the entire print, you'll see visible differences in gloss across the model. I printed this Benchy at two speeds to show this a little bit easier. The bottom half at 30 millimeters a second and the top half at 100. You can clearly see the change in speed resulting in a much duller appearance. And this is where keeping your fan and speed consistent really comes into play. Most slicers have a bunch of settings that will automatically slow down and speed up your printhead and fan to ensure optimal printing. Unfortunately, some of these settings don't actually take into account the outside sheen of your silk print and can sometimes make the outside walls look inconsistent and patchy. Fortunately, this can be fixed quite easily by just keeping your fans at 100% for the entire print, as well as slowing down the outside walls. Just make sure you use the same speed for the outside walls that you did for your temperature tower. And if you want a complete uniform shine at the cost of a bit of extra time, you can also change the inner wall and top surface to the same speed to make everything uniform and perfect. And here's a comparison between a Benchy that I just printed normally versus one where I slowed down the inner wall, the outer wall, and the top surface. The differences are quite small, but this is because the print is small. When you print larger objects, they will become much more noticeable. So the best advice I can give you is this. Print a temperature tower at the exact speed you'll be using in your final print and see what works best for you. Just remember, higher temperatures equals smoother flow, better layer blending, and a glossier finish. Slower speeds mean more time to cool and self-level, 
which boosts the overall surface shine. If you want to print faster, you'll just need to increase your temperature, but watch out for overhangs and bridges. And always make sure you scroll through the color scheme in your slicer as it has some super useful information in there that can show you problems before you print. Sections like speed or fan speed are especially useful for telling you if your printer is adjusting things automatically. Most of the time you'll want them all to be one solid color. However, if you check your layer time and notice there are some very small, fast layers, then you may need to enable settings like max fan speed threshold to slow the printer down in these areas to ensure you have a nice consistent outside gloss. Otherwise, you'll end up with dull patches on your print like this, as the printer is printing these small layers too quickly and not allowing them to cool. Now, another important setting to keep in mind is your layer height. I would stick to 0.16 or lower. Thinner layers mean smoother surface and better gloss. And because silk can exaggerate overhang issues, the extra detail can help with print reliability too, especially if you have that fan speed threshold disabled. Avoid features like fuzzy skin or ironing because they're gonna ruin the nice shiny outside gloss. Now, if you love the look of Silk PLA, but you don't wanna deal with tiling in slicer settings, then PCBWay, today's sponsor, can do all of this for you. Just upload your model, choose the type of silk filament you like, and their team handles the rest. No more failed prints, no tweaking, just perfect glossy results. Plus, their instant quoting system makes it super quick and easy to get a price and place your order. Check out the link below to get $5 off your first order. Now moving on to retraction. Silk PLA can be stringy, especially if it's not dried properly. If you're getting stringing and your filament is dry, then you can always run a retraction test. Set the layer height to 0.2 millimeters, so each segment of the test represents exactly one millimeter of retraction. Once it's printed, find the cleanest section and update your slicer settings accordingly. And even if you do end up getting some stringing, a few swipes of a blowtorch can generally clean it up pretty well. Now moving on to infill, top layers, and supports. Printing hot means the filament takes longer to cool. That can cause top layer bubbling or drooping, especially if your infill is sparse. Here is an example of this. You can see there is some bubbling on the top of the surface. This was because there wasn't enough support for the plastic to print on. The fix for this is simple. Increase the amount of top layers you have. I bumped it up to 10 and the problem disappeared. You can also try slightly increasing your infill percentage. I use adaptive cubic infill because it puts more where it's needed and less where it's not. Instead of just putting the same amount of infill everywhere when it's unnecessary. Now supports can be a little bit tricky with silk PLA because of the shine. Every scar is a lot more visible than you'd get with normal matte PLA. You can see that the support masks are much more evident on the silk version. To help minimize this, you can always adjust your top Z distance to around 0.275. Now this number may be different on your printer, but from everything that I've seen and all the people that have used this number, it works pretty damn well. But I'd recommend running a top Z distance test model just to dial it in perfectly. Moving on to moisture. Even a slightly wet spool of silk PLA will string, blob and lose its sheen. So just make sure that you dry your filament for four to six hours at 55 to 60 C. I use the Sunlu S2 and the Polyphemus filament dryer and they both work really well. If you want more info on drying methods, or if you want to find more about these filament dryers, I've linked a full video in the description. Now you may have noticed that my silk dragons are two different colors. This effect comes from using bi or tri-colored filament. These look really, really awesome. You can get color shifting effects straight off the printer, no post-processing required. But the twist, every spool is wound differently. So if you're doing repeatable symmetrical models, you'll need to test how the color pattern wraps for every single spool. Doesn't take too much time, all you need to do is print out a configuration disc, and it should only take around 20 minutes. Each notch on this disc represents 15 degrees. So just have a look around the edges to see where you'd like to transition the color, and then have a look at the notch that is above it. On this one, it meets at around 105 degrees. So I import the model I want to use, rotate it 105 degrees, and then print. Now the colors will transition exactly where I want them straight down the middle. Now I personally don't do this very much as I find that having each print a little bit different offers a unique selling point, but if you need your prints to look identical, then this is how you do it. Now when you print with bi and tri-colored filament, eventually you're gonna have a couple of half empty spools. So if you want to join these two separate spools while keeping the color sequence consistent, then you can always use something like the Sunlu filament splicer and manually align the segments. But I find this to be extremely tedious and sometimes you may think you got it perfect, but it'll still turn out looking like this. 
So if you don't want to go through any of that, just make sure that your print uses a specific amount of filament so you can use the same spool multiple times and not have any waste left over that needs to be fused to another spool. For example, when I print these dragons, I make sure that they use as close to 500 grams as possible, so I can print two of them with one spool and only have a very small amount of filament left over. Now if you like these dragon heads and want to print or sell them for yourself, if you join up to my Patreon on the commercial tier, you'll get the model for free, a commercial license, as well as instructions on how to print it. Hope this video has helped, thanks for watching.